Hey, Goblin, you've been really practicing those war drums. i will bring the generic Goblin noise! Hey, gang, and welcome back. Just so you know, you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, one word, at flipsidegaming.com to get 10% off orders $10 or more. You can also use the promo code at Original Magic Art on everything except for paintings. And finally, you can use the code at mtg.multizone.ca to get 10% off of your orders of singles. Using the code will help you save some money and help out the channel at the same time. Today's game is another multi-zone matchup, and Joel is back playing his newly made Chainer deck, keeping a Dockside Extortionist, Bolus's Citadel, Ingotsure, Shriek Maw, Mountain, Wooded Foothills, and Tainted Peak. I am playing Tristani, and I keep a secluded step, a Plains, Seance, Worldly Tutor, Forest, Loaming Shaman, and Angel of Finality. Williams is here playing his own deck this time, playing Saskia, and keeps to Shiro, Plains, Smoldering Marsh, Canopy Vista, Call to Glory, Kentaro, and Beast Within. And last but not least, Miguel has just opened and sleeved up a Cadena deck, keeping Thran Dynamo, An Island, Myriad Landscape, Mire and Misery, Crumbshell Crab, Golgari Rot Farm, and Sigur Jibe Elder. Miguel wins the die roll and starts us off. Miguel plays a Tap Myriad Landscape and passes. Williams plays a Sandstep Citadel, which comes in Tap and passes. I also play a Tap Land with a Secluded Step before passing to Joel. Joel plays a Wooded Foothills, cracking it and taking one to find a land while passing. Miguel plays a Golgari Rot Farm, bouncing the Myriad Landscape to his hand and discarding a card at the end of turn. Williams plays a Plains and casts Kentaro. I play a Forest and cast Nature's Lore to go and find the Cycle Land from Amonkhet. Joel plays a Tainted Peak and then casts an Apprentice Necromancer. Miguel replays his Myriad Landscape and taps his Golgari Rot Farm for a Sakura Tribe Elder. Williams drops an Isolated Chapel before tapping out for Tashiro. He's seen my deck before, so moving to combat, he gets in for some chip damage with Kentaro. My turn is quick with another Forest and then tapping out to cast Tristani. Joel plays a Mountain while I transform Tristani into Tristani. Joel then passes, and at the end of turn, Miguel sacrifices his Kur Tribe Elder to go and find a basic island. Miguel taps out for Kaden in his main phase, and he plays his first reduced morph creature, drawing as it enters. He then plays an island, and passes. Williams plays a Smoldering Marsh, and heads to combat. He swings everything this time at Joel, who has no choice but to take the hit. I untap, and use Worldly Tutor on my upkeep to guarantee my draw. I go and find a creature, with Ulvenwald Hydra being put on top before I draw it for turn. I then play a Plains, and pass. Joel plays a Swamp, and taps out for Chainer. He comes in and gains haste as Joel didn't cast him from hand, and he swings his commander at Williams. Miguel draws and plays a Reliquary Tower. He plays his free Morphe creature, drawing from Cadena's trigger as it enters. Heading to combat, Cadena heads at Joel and the Morph at Williams, and they both take the hit. In Miguel's post-combat main phase, he casts Explore, drawing a card and playing an Ash Barrens as his second land for turn. Williams plays a Plains, and gets revenge, going back at Miguel with his two Samurai. Miguel doesn't block with his untapped Morph creature, and with nothing else, Williams passes. I cast Swag Tusk in my main phase, gaining 8 life as it enters, and then pass to Joel. Before leaving my end step though, Miguel turns face up his Chrome Stell Crab, exchanging control of it for Joel's Chainer. Joel is, shall we say, less than impressed. Joel untaps and plays a Mountain. He evokes a Shriek Maw who comes in and targets Tristani to destroy her, before being sacrificed as well. He wanted to do it to his own Chainer, but sadly Shriek Maw can only target non-black creatures, and with nothing else, he passes to Miguel. Miguel draws and looks at his Morph creature before turning it face up. It's an Ice Feather Aven this time, and Miguel has its targeted trigger return his Chrome Shell Crab to his hand. We then see an immediate morph creature hitting the field, and I wonder what it is, and he draws from Cadena's ability, and then passes to Williams. 
Williams plays a canopy vista which comes in untapped because of his two basics. He passes, and Miguel cracks his landscape to go and find some basics as well. Matilda approves. I draw for turn, and pay 5 for Marari's wake before passing to Joel. Joel plays another swamp, and taps out for Bolas' citadel. He looks at his top card, and decides to spend 2 life to cast Rakdos Charm off the top. He exiles Miguel's graveyard, and looks at the top card again. He pays 2 life this time to cast Knight's Whisper. Before resolving the Whisper though, Joel looks at his top card again, and responds to the Whisper by casting Bedevil for 3 life off the top. He has a hard choice between hitting his own commander to get it back, or the Morph creature, who could potentially be the Chrome Scale Crab again, which means if Miguel turns it face up, he can steal Chainer again. In the end, Joel decides to hit Chainer, sending him to the command zone. Joel then draws his 2 and loses his 2 life. Joel passes, and at the end of turn, Williams jumps on the anti Miguel bandwagon to blow up the Morph creature with Beast Within. Miguel morphs a face down creature and draws from Cadena. Heading to combat, Cadena heads at Joel while the Ice Feather Avon heads at me for 2 in the air. Miguel then pays 3 in his post combat main phase for another morph creature, drawing as it enters. He puts to stack Mire and Misery, which has Williams and I both losing a creature, and with my Swag Tusk dying, I get a 3-3 beast. Williams plays a copy of Untadake the Cloud Keep as his land for turn, which comes in tapped. He then brings out Saskia, who upon entering, has him naming Miguel. I draw for turn with my mana doubler apparently, and tap 4 lands for Zendikar Resurgent, making sure I tap my lands properly to pay for the spell. I then tap my remaining forest for 3 green, and cast Loaming Shaman, drawing from the Resurgent on cast, and then when it enters, shuffle my yard into my library. I then drop the land I drew from the Shaman, and pass. At the end of turn, Miguel turns face up Nantuka Vigilante, and blows up the Citadel. Joel draws, and plays a Command Tower. He casts the very exciting and very new Doxai Extortionist, gaining two treasure tokens as it enters. He then passes to Miguel. Miguel untaps and draws for turn. He morphs another creature drawing from Cadena. Moving to combat, he isn't happy with my triple mana and swings all out at me. I declare no blocks, and before moving to damage, Miguel flashes in Great Oak Guardian, which pumps his board by plus 2 plus 2, and untaps them all. I then take 23 points of damage, and in his post-combat main phase, he casts Farseek to go and find a Sunken Hollow, putting it to the field tapped, and passes. Williams loses 2 to his Untadake, as he pays to cast Takeno, Samurai General. He follows up with a Sensei Golden Tail, who you might remember from this past Monday's game, before passing turn. I draw for turn, and recast Rasani in my main phase. I draw from the Resurgent trigger, and then she enters the battlefield. I then cast Uvenwald Hydra, drawing on cast, and then stacking my triggers to find a land first, and then gain the life from Tristani. I grab a Rogue's Passage, and then gain 9 life. I then tap 2 lands, floating 2 mana, to cast Momentous Fall on my Hydra. I gain another 9 life, and draw another 9 more cards. With the two floating, and tapping another land, I'm able to cast Karmic Guide, drawing as I cast the Angel, and gaining three as it enters. I then bring back the Hydra again, and stack the triggers again to find a land first, and gain life second. I grab my own Reliquary Tower, and then gain ten life from Tristani. As I no longer have to discard my massive hand, I pass to Joel. Joel plays a Swamp, and pays to recast Chainer. He gains haste as it enters, and he passes. Miguel plays another morph creature in his main phase thanks to Cadena, and draws from his commander's second ability. He casts secret plans, and counts up something, before passing turn. Williams plays a scavenger ground, and pays 6 for Thunderfoot Bayloth. Seeing as how Saskia still has Miguel's name on her, Miguel turns face up his Karu Smell Snatcher, and steals the creature spell away into exile. Miguel also draws from the Secret Plans trigger for turning a creature face up. Not completely dissuaded from his turn, 
Williams then swings his Team Samurai at Joel so that he can try and get some damage in on Miguel as well. Before moving to blockers though, Joel sacrifices some treasures to help cast Necromancy and brings back the Shriek Maw. The Shriek Maw enters and destroys Takeno, which lowers the power and toughness of Team Samurai. He then blocks like this. Because of Bushido though, Kintaro survives, but we do say Sayonara to Sensei Golden Tail, and with nothing else, Williams passes. I play a Command Tower for my land for turn, and cast Panharmonicon. With the two floating still, I tap another land to help pay for Aetherflux Reservoir. We then see Orishkar's expertise hitting the stack, and I gain 3 life from the Reservoir, and draw 11 cards from the Hydra being an 11-11. I then forget to put something out for free because I'm a magic genius, and instead decide to cast Regal Force. I gain 4 life from the Reservoir, and as it enters, I draw 5 cards twice and gain 6 life twice. I then cast Seedborn Muse, gaining 5 from the Reservoir, and then 5 twice from Tristani as it enters. I then pass to Joel, untapping as he does. Joel plays a mountain for turn, and in his main phase, pays 2 for Altar of Dementia. He evokes an ingot chewer, who enters and targets my reservoir. This more or less forces my hand at this point, as I tap some lands to cast Restoration Angel. I gain 1 life from the reservoir, and draw from casting her from the Resurgent trigger. As she enters, I gain 5 life twice from Tristani, and get to flicker 2 creatures. These happen to be my Ulvenwald Hydra, and Regal Force. I resolve my Hydra triggers first, searching for two lands, and grabbing a plains and a temple garden, and then gaining 13 life twice. I then resolve the Regal Force trigger, gaining 6 life twice again, and this time drawing 6 cards twice. I've drawn the newly added Court of Calling to my deck, and cast it where X is large enough to find an Avenger of Zendikar. Oh, I also gained 2 life from the Reservoir. I then gain 6 life twice from the Avenger entering, and then 12 plant tokens twice, who all enter, and are 1 threes because of the wake. This has me gaining 6 life 24 times, which is enough for me to activate the reservoir 3 times and finish off the table. Game review time. So Joel showcased two things. First and foremost, how weak his deck is without the commander. And unfortunately when you get your commander stolen by a chrome shell crab, you don't really get to do stuff. He also went pretty deep with the Bull of Citadel play, and I do think that Miguel was probably in the right for blowing it up, despite the fact that I had two mana doublers out. I could have had a handful of lands and no gas, whereas Joel was in a better position being able to play off the top card of his library for only life. Speaking of Miguel, his deck did incredibly well considering he added about two or three cards to the deck, and we didn't even see any of them. I was impressed with Cadena straight out of the box in a pre-con game, and I'm doubly impressed by the fact that the deck does so well against other constructed decks, despite the fact that it's a pre-constructed deck. I think Williams unfortunately struggled a little bit, it seemed like he drew a bunch of lands and not a lot of action or good samurai. By the time he was able to get the ball rolling, everyone else had their engines going, except for Joel who was too far behind anyway. Seedborn Muse and Court of Calling are two new additions to my Tristani deck, and I am very happy to have put them in based on this game. They help to smooth out two of the bigger issues the deck has, being mana hungry, and not being able to find answers. I've got a few other additions I want to test out, plus I'm hoping to make a video comparing Girid and Tristani and listing the pros and cons and explaining why I haven't made the shift to Naya just yet. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.